turn off lights. Turn on TV room lamp. Make it so. Hello YouTube, Chris the Frugal Audio File here. Hope you enjoyed that clip from last night of my uh, home theater in the dark. Today I want to give you a tour of my home theater, or as I mainly call it, my TV room, because it's not quite a home theater, but it works for me. And so we're coming in the entrance here. This is actually the front room of my house. This house was chopped up for rental so that they can get as many uh, students in here as possible because I live in a college town. And so this was the, the front room, but as you see, it's been chopped apart and there's the front door and that, that window right there looks outside on my front porch. So I use it as a TV room because I live here by myself and it basically serves as my home theater. So we'll sit down here and talk a little bit about what I got going on here. And I, I wanna go over my equipment, my speakers, electronics, my furniture a little and maybe we'll highlight the decor some too. But anyway, to begin with, this is my TV. This is a 55 inch, inch sharp Roku TV. And I've had this for about, oh, about four years now. And it is only 1080p and it is not HDR or anything like that. No VBR on this guy. Very basic TV. I think I got it for like 320. Oh yeah, back in 2017. So it was a good deal back then but it's certainly starting to show its age now. And of course, right under it there, you see my Echo Dot that I use quite a bit in this room. So yeah, this is my TV that, that I'm using. This is probably the next thing I replace in this system because for the most part, I'm very happy with the audio in this uh, setup here. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about audio. And to begin with, let's look at my speakers. And these are the Aperion Intimus 5 series of speakers. And right there, you see the 5T. It is a single one inch silk dome with two, uh, I think they're polycarbonate woofers in there. Nothing fancy as far as the materials are concerned. You know, you don't have any beryllium or um, ceramic woofers, but they, they do an excellent job. So I really uh, in, enjoy these speakers. They are in fantastic value. I picked these towers up for 340 each. I have two of them. There's the other one over there. Can you see it? Yeah, you can kind of see it. There you go, you can see it. Anyway, and then I got the center channel here. Uh, this was, oh man, what was it? 240. And then over there are my surrounds. These are the uh, 5Bs and this is the 5C. And I will go ahead and take off this grill here for you very basic but functional grill nothing too fancy about it and you got your wood trim there and then your standard kind of acoustically transparent nylon fabric on here Not, nothing too fancy about it so we'll set that down there but what i love about this center is that it's a three-way center and you can see here the the dual four inch drivers now this one is um active this one is passive and then you have an active three inch mid-range woofer here and your one inch silk dome tweeter so what's great about this is because a good portion of your dialogue comes out of this center stack here it really helps with lobing and then especially this is active and this one is passive so it has a very good center image that comes out of this as you'd expect with a center channel but having that three inch mid-range right under the tweeter it makes a big difference with the off access performance of this center. And it produces some of the clearest dialogue I've heard, certainly some that I've had in my system. Now, the reason I got uh, these speakers is because a buddy of mine had some Aperion um, Virus series speakers, and I couldn't quite afford those, but he said, you know, these are a lot like mine, just um, not quite as expensive, not quite as loud, but you can hear the heritage of Aperion in them. And he was, he was right. When I compared these to his, yeah, his sound a little bigger, a little clearer, but these are very close. And especially for, you know, a third the cost, I believe the Aperion Center is 600. You know, this one 
was uh, 240. I got the pair of the surrounds for 260, and then the, the towers were 340 each. So, you know, 680 on those. So I invested some money in these speakers, and this is an example of frugal not necessarily being cheap. Because to spend, you know, $1,200-ish on speakers, to me is quite a bit, but I think it's worth the investment, and I'm very happy with them. I'm very glad that I did that. <laughs> for some reason, I've got a light glow back there for my outdoor light. Oops, should have picked that up. But anyway, that's my speakers. Let's look at my subs, and that is plural. So here you have my SVS SB12 NSD. Got these a couple years ago when they were having them on that fantastic deal on the outlet sale. Uh, I picked up a pair of these for 400 each. So you can see it there. There's the, the woofer. And uh, these are a 12 inch sealed subwoofer. They are 400 watt RMS, 800 watt pink amplifier, and they are amazing. I'm definitely getting subsonic with these guys. I think that I hit somewhere near 16 Hertz with these guys. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Uh, for what I paid, I'm pretty happy with it. And then you can see, sorry, I'm sitting on the ground here doing this filming, but here's the grill. Fantastic metal grill. High quality there for that. Love it. Yep. So these speakers and subs together are fantastic. But we all know that electronics does affect the sound. So what am I running here? And this is where I say separate on a budget comes in. Because in a way, I do have separate, although it's not exactly. Down there you see my Denon AVR um, X3400H. H stands for HEOS. It's got that whole house solution. I don't use it, but it's there if you need it. I use the AirPlay feature on it sometimes, although it's a little bit um, finicky, but it, it does work. Anyway, fantastic receiver. Picked it up for 450. You can't even find something close to it for 800 bucks uh, right, right now. Prices have really skyrocketed since COVID and some of the tariffs and so receiver deals are not what they used to be but I got this for 450 in 2019 and I am very pleased with it it does a fantastic job not looking to replace it anytime soon because you just can't match it for what I paid and uh, it'll be you'd be hard pressed to find something better what I would like to get eventually is the x3700 because that has preamp mode where it will disable the internal amplifiers. And yes, this receiver does have pre-outs that I have connected to my Emotiva Basex A700 amplifier here. And this is, uh, I think it's 80 watts at eight ohms, 150 or 140 at four ohms amplifier. It's nothing like going to knock your socks off with its volume and you know blow your hair back, but it does work great. It's very clear, it does give a little extra volume and punch. I feel like running this that maybe my sound not, you know, a hundred times better, but I have more overhead for, um, you know, those explosive moments and moves. I'm not worried about my amplifier giving out and these speakers here, they can handle it. And this guy, I actually, this is a good example of my frugality. I got this for, I believe it was 320, somewhere around there because I had credit with Emotiva. I have one of their Fusion 8100 receivers and it gave up the ghost and they gave me a credit and so i was able to pick up this normally i think it's 600 650 i don't know the prices have fluctuated on these a lot but last i saw it was 600 i got it for 320 when i bought it it was selling for 600 certainly and and i got it for 320 so a fantastic deal on that guy and i'm very happy with it now neither one of these are balanced so that's not something you get in uh, this price range Did, would that make a difference probably a little bit but how much i don't know would it be worth the upcharge because i believe a balanced processor the cheapest one you can get is a marantz for two grand maybe a little less i think it's like 1500 on accessories for less if you can find the av8 av8805 or 7705 i think and there's angel gonna help out she loves to, to uh, call back in there and hopefully not mess with my speaker wires but anyway that's angel my cat and uh yeah so um, that's about the cheapest you're going to get for a balanced processor. And, uh, this guy, I got, I got it for 450. Now Emotiva does make an unbalanced processor. I think they're 699, 
but I've not heard great things about their MC700, so not interested in that. I'm very happy with this. This has Odyssey Multi EQ, EQ XT32, which is, you know, fantastic for the money. I know Dirac is better. Probably people are going to be saying that in the comments or ARC on Anthem, but this is what uh, I could afford. Works awesome for me and is a great setup. All right, and then this is my venerable Panasonic DVD player. I've had this guy probably for six years, maybe even seven or eight years, and still works great. It's uh, been an awesome performer. My, own, my main complaint is that it loads disc a little bit slow, but again, it is uh, seven, eight years old, I think, somewhere around there, and so it's, it's to be expected. Now, this is not a 4K Blu-ray player, but again, this is not a 4K TV. I didn't put an image on there, so you're seeing my reflection because it was messing with the ISO on my iPhone filming here, so I just left it off this time. And then you can see my, my Star Wars 10 disc movie pack. I just got that. And I think I actually did an unboxing of that. Yeah, I did. Loving that. That's been great fun, but that's up there. And uh, yeah, so that's basically an overview of my equipment. There's my movies and CDs down there. Yeah, that's, that's all of my movies and CDs that I own. Um, I think it's something like 600 CDs and 200 movies that I have stored in those booklets down there. Um, I'm the type that likes to keep things in book because I don't like a bunch of clutter around and so I get rid of the cases and just keep these. I have a few movie cases around but not a lot. All right so that's the overview of my equipment in this system. Let's talk about furniture. So to begin with you're, what you're looking at here is a TV stand that a buddy of mine and I built together. Well he was the brains behind it because I don't have a lot of carpentry skills and with my vision that stuff is, is challenging and so uh I, I just assisted him, did some sanding, did, did some holding of pieces while he really did the bulk of the work. And this is birch plywood with an ebony stain on it. And then he did some furring here with, this is a Roman OG bit that he used to do this um, bevel here. And then here you have the furring strip to kind of cover up seams and stuff. It just, it looks so nice. And I, I believe it cost me like 150 bucks for the materials. You couldn't touch that for a pre-built, or I should say a store-bought uh, stand that you still have to put together to get this solid of quality. Yeah, you wouldn't even be able to touch it for 150 bucks. So I'm I'm very happy with it. Plan to have that around for years. And then speaking of the same buddy, uh, I actually purchased this home theater chair from him, and this is the only one that I have. He uh, tried two different styles from home theater market or HD market. And he didn't like this one, so he had it in his office for a while, but when he moved away, he sold it to me for, I think it was 250. And it works great for me. It's not a perfect chair. Um, it's certainly not as comfortable as some of the other ones, but it's pretty great for me. And I just use these stands here, like to hold my, you see my iPad there. And it, it's got the, the motorized stool, foot stool here, foot rest, I guess you'd call it. So you don't need to put that up, but. It's got all that. It's got the LED lights, but I don't use them on that. And this is just a basic brown couch. Oh, and I forgot to talk about this is one of my favorite pieces. And I'm sure that not that. I'm sure that many of you recognize this, but this is the Harmony 650. Oh, I love these Harmony remotes. It's so sad that Logitech is getting out of the business of making these because this works perfect for me. It did take some tweaking and some programming to get it to work right with my smart TV, but still nevertheless it it's an awesome remote and uh, i'm sad to see these not being sold anymore but yeah i actually have two of them i have one in my bedroom system which i will show you someday and then back there i just got a basic black couch table that holds my router and my open mesh ap as well as lamp and a couple decorations so nothing too fancy back there and the final piece of furniture i want to show you well besides the speaker stand for the rear surrounds there are my acoustic treatments. Again, the same buddy that uh, helped me build the stand and uh, sold me this chair. He and I built these, and you see I've got the two by four foot panels around the room. Had to go narrower there, so he got the one by four, and then there's two back there. And these are just basically uh, one by twos built into frames, and again, he built that, and then rock salt in them. And then back there, we have 
um, a two by four by uh, four, not, not, yeah, four inch deep base trap. That's the only corner where I could put one, so I put one in there, it does help. Oh, and also down there is my secondary sub. Same thing, SVS, SB12, NSD that I purchased on the factory outlet sale. I think I actually got that like a year later, but it was the same 400 bucks. So anyway, that's kind of the furniture I'm rocking in this small but functional room. And I have kind of a movie slash TV theme in here. I see the Star Wars, but there's there's some Doctor Who stuff. And you saw the DeLorean over there. And this right here, my niece actually made this for me. It's Doctor Who. Um, she drew that and gave it to me for uh, my birthday one time. And it, so that's very special to me, but it looks amazing. I think it looks just as good, if not better than the store-bought one over there. And then we got Yoda up there. So that's a tour of this system. And I like to call this separates on a budget because um, it's basically like having separates that I, I didn't spend multiple thousands of dollars to, on it. Um, would that improve things? Oh, I'm sure, but it works great for me. And with my frugal nature, I think it sounds amazing. There's just something about me that when I hear things cost X amount of dollars, I just, I, I just lose interest. But when I hear you got something on a good budget, hey Angel, uh, and you got it on, at a good value, then I start to get more excited. And this is all high value items. Uh, I will link what I can. I'm not gonna be able to link a lot because a lot of this stuff is unfortunately not sold in anymore. I really wouldn't recommend a Sharp TV. That's probably the weakest link in this whole system. It's fine. It was a good value, or should say that it was a good deal. When I got it, it was cheap, but I think you could do better um, with something uh, th these days for a uh, runabout or less money. You could probably get a TCL 55 inch for less. That would be way better than that. Probably be 4K. Matter of fact, it would be 4K. And so, yeah, I'm not gonna link that, but whatever I can find to link, I will link. The m one Tiva does still sell that A100 amplifier. The stock is in and out from time to time, but they do still sell it. So I can, I can link that and uh, whatever else I can find, I'll put down in the description below. Well, I thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. Also uh, take a look at my Patreon. I will put a link in the description down below. And remember, frugal doesn't necessarily mean cheap.